Hey there, StarCraft fans! It's Falcon Paladin coming at you with yet another edition of StarCraft II Legacy of the Void. Today, it's going to be a match between T.Y. and Sue here on Nightshade, the latter edition from Ketavate Say 2020, the qualification rounds. And let's get right on into it here. Top left hand corner is the Red Terran player, T.Y. And in the bottom right hand corner, we got ourselves the Blue Zerg player, Sue. All right, man, Sue got his first premier victory in 2019, and T.Y. is a very, very excellent Terran player. And this is one of the longer macro games from the replay pack that ESL released. Man, ESL took over for the WCS this year, and I'm kind of liking it. Just because they <laughs> released a replay pack, and I'm not entirely sure WCS did last year or the year before or the year before that so hey it's a pool first it's a 16 pool here from sue <laughs> and not scv scouting here is ty you better keep that reaper at home man that is a cardinal sin if you don't want scv scout that's fine but you better keep the reaper at home versus an elite zerg player because you never know when they're gonna go pool first we'll have to see We'll have to see if T.Y. follows the rules of Terran versus Zerg, or if he's going to risk it all by sending the Reaper across, and then suddenly there are Zerglings in your natural, and suddenly your natural base is going to be denied, or at the very least delayed. Oh, oh. here we go. Woohoo! SCV scouting T.Y. Very nice. Reaper name is Princess Peach, the human ruler of the Mushroom Kingdom. Princess Peach always seemed to be kidnapped by Bowser. However, this was actually an overly elaborate scheme to get away from the brick-destroying, turtle-slaughtering Mario. After Mario beat Bowser once again, Peach had enough, launched herself into space, and joined the Reaper program willingly just so she would be fast enough to get away. On reflection, she realized she should have just gotten a restraining order instead. So the SCV pokes its nose in and sees, huh, that hatch isn't done yet. So, actually, hold on, have you poked your nose in? Yes. So, I mean, wait. Did we make the Zerglings? Sort of. There's two Zerglings out. Where are they, though? What the heck? What are you doing down here? Alright. Cool, I guess. This is really weird. Why did he go... I guess there's another Reaper back home. No, the Reaper did stay home. Okay. So, <laughs> T.Y., he moved out. I thought he was coming across. No, no, no. He's actually staying home because he recognizes the pool is late. Or the hatch is late, rather, and the pool is early, and that means he's, he's, we're good. This is how you gotta do Terran players. This is the rules you gotta follow if you're gonna win a TVZ against a Zerg player. Just one of the things. One of the many things you gotta worry about. So third hatch coming up here for Sue. His early pool gambit did not pay off in the long run, which is really annoying stuff. These links are gonna try to sneak in after the Hellions move out, would be my guess. And at the very least, maybe try to kill an SCV or something. But we already have the Reaper coming across. We have the Hellions coming here, too. And I don't, there's not really any vision. Like, there's no perchy spot here for the Overlord to hang out. So he doesn't know exactly when the Hellions are gone. So I'm not sure what those links are trying to do. We'll keep an eye on them as best we can. Ah, now they start to move as soon as stuff happens over here. So that was it. He was waiting for the Hellions to get across the map and try to do something. And then he'll cruise the links in. But of course there's more than two Hellions. Any normal Terran player is going to make more than two in this matchup, but definitely going for a Cloak Banshee follow-up, which is something I kind of associate with special, but, you know, it works out for T.Y. here as well. He feels like it. So the Queens move in, and then they dart past, and the Lings are going to try to at least kill the one Hellion that is really injured, but they're not getting any of them yet. All of the Hellions are alive. All of them are bruised, and this is some fantastic control from T.Y. Look at this. Finally, the Hellions start to go down. But three drones going down there as well. And that actually could have been a lot worse for Sue. He controlled that as well as he probably could. The Hellions were alive in Sadie's base longer than he wanted them to be, I'm sure. Did he wait until the Hellions were dead to start that lair? He sure did. He sure did deny that information as well as he could. So T.Y., one of those players that just more of a bio-style player, but he hasn't quite committed to anything yet. He doesn't have engineering base. He doesn't have an armory. He doesn't have multiples of barracks or factories. So this stage of the game, if you're scouting, you still have no idea what the Terran player is up to. 
This could be any number of things. Zerglings with the speed mean they have map control, which means the Hellion just needs to probably go back home, and he's going to do that. The Great Wall of Supply Depots is coming up at the front door of the natural base. This is not quite an easy third base like you would see on Thunderbird. And the Banshee gets on in, ends up getting a couple kills, but is also chased away by the presence of a Spore Crawler and a Banshee. And go oh, run. No, 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 no. Banshee, that's a dangerous spot to be in. God, oh, it's just out of range. Just out of range of that Spore's detection. Marine shoving away the Overlord. That's a third CC coming up. And we have another factory. All right. Are we going mech? What is it with the mech versus Zerg recently? We've seen quite a bit of it on the channel. And in fairness, mech games do go longer than average games. He's getting hyperflight rotors. Did we see this build? Have we seen this? We've seen two players go hyperflight rotors in a week on the channel, which is not something we've seen very much at all prior to that. I'd say ever. I mean, I can remember maybe two or three games ever in my casting career that we've got hyperflight rotors research. And it doesn't always go very well, and that's why it's not researched very often, is you kind of have to commit a lot of the Banshees, and they're just very, very fragile, and Mulisks kill them real fast, and anything can kill them real fast as long as they can hit them. But Baneling Nest on the way at about six minutes, got double evolution chamber. He recognized the third base was coming up. He doesn't need a Baneling Nest immediately. And it's double armoring. So what kind of mech are we going for today, TY? What's it going to be? It's going to be tanks, obviously. We do see a lot of tanks in the mech. Race car mech, just pure race car mech, has not been working for Darren's for a long time now. So what we're going to see is a combination of Cyclones and Hellions, plus a bunch of tanks in the mix, getting Thors as necessary. And then maybe some BCs while we're at it, but I don't see those. Sue could be going for some Mutalisks. We did see Rogue do that the other day. Double Banshees. Are here at the third base, trying to pick up as many of these drones as they can. Doing a pretty good job of it, honestly. That's a seven kill Banshee here. And both Banshees are extremely injured, but they also have Cloak. Okay, that one doesn't... That one, all right, well. Risky. Calls a risky play. But eight drones killed. This is really good harassment out of TY, man. This is excellent harassment. Okay, so now the Banshee ends up going down. A bunch of Hellions show up, and they're not even really microing against the meager amount of Lings that were sent in. And suddenly, nice body block, though. Wow, what a body block on that Queen. Saves the day. That could have been a lot worse than nine drones killed in the last minute or so here. Queen, once again, with the body blocking. Does take a lot of Hellion shots from a lot of Hellions to kill a Queen, and she knows it. She's willing to lay down her life to protect her babies here. Fourth base on the way from Sue, as you need to do in the timings here. Thor production has already begun for TY. And the mutas are out. So this is... Man, we saw Rogue do this exact same thing against... Who was it? Was it Rogue Innovation, I want to say? Was it Rogue? I think it was Innovation on the channel recently. But yeah, this is exactly what Rogue did. He made a handful of mutalisks. He avoided the Thors as well as he could. The Thors weren't quite on the field yet, though, and I think that's the difference here. TY's Thors are present. Man, you can really see the skin here, the Borderlands 3 skin. Look at that. Every time, every time I see it, it's like I'm playing a different game. It is the most significantly different looking skin, I think, in the game. I mean, sure, we've got some Protoss skins that look different. Obviously, the Taldorim. Um. Also, the Purifier skin looks fairly different in a lot of ways, but... I just, it's visually striking in ways the other ones are not. Oh no, Sue's going Swarm Host. Not a fan of this. I'm not saying it can't work, because there are strategies I've said cannot work here, and I've been wrong recently. The meta's kind of in a weird shifty position right now, so we haven't quite settled on some things yet. But Swarm Host Nidus against this mech is just not something I'm really, really into. Especially because the Thors are pretty good at picking Locusts out of the sky. If you have enough Hellbats with Blue Flame, which is, which is almost done, there you go. Infernal Pre-Igniter coming up. And you're just looking at the Locusts getting roasted up before they can really do much damage at all. So, TY knows what's up, man. He's going for all the little pieces of mech that... make it really, really hard for Zerg to do a lot. So, Nidus Worm comes up at the north. Is going to fly on into this third base, but watch this. The Locusts getting picked out of the sky quite nicely. A bunch of them land, and then... they get roasted up. Did any SCVs die there? No! No SCVs have been killed this entire game in exchange for 24 drones. This is what I'm talking about. This is what I'm talking about. I don't like the Swarm Host Locust versus a Terran who's mecking. Not a huge fan of it. I know everybody thinks it's a ridiculously overpowered strategy, but it's honestly not that great. 
I've seen it lose more than once. And look, they force the Locust to land here. And then they can't do anything. You just pick up the Thors. Nothing bad happens. And you kill the Nidus Worm. This is just masterful from TY here. Sue. I don't like it. I don't like what you're doing here, Sue. But again, it's a long game. It is far from over. Let's not get too ahead of ourselves here. Muta's trying to find what damage they can, which they're great against Hellions, which can't shoot up at Hellbats. But there's Liberators out with their anti-air form. There's Thors, which can do really well against these Mutalisks. But it's going to be all Swarm Hosts all the time. And... I don't know about this. I honestly do not know about this strategy. Make me a believer, Sue. Show me this can be done. Splash damage pretty good against the... Look at this. Look at how many of these Locusts are dying before they even land. And then, whoosh, they're gone. Dude, I know it's hard. I know you're watching this and saying, I can't do this, Falcon. Ty I can, but I can't. This is really hard. You're right. There's a lot of the strategies in StarCraft and a lot of reactions to strategies in StarCraft that the pros make look easy and you can't accomplish. I get it. I'm on that, I'm on that train. But we're talking about balancing the game at the highest levels. I mean, this is an incredible push out of TY here. Army supply about even, but a ton of that supply is actually tied up in those swarm hosts. The problem is there's no anti-air at this fourth base for some reason. I don't quite understand. But uh, the tanks are sieging up. A lot of queens are going down. Cross the Biles to finish off one of these tanks at the very least. And then Locust in defensive positions coming on in. Another tank goes down, trying to focus down to Thor, but the blue flame really effective. Another Kuros the Bile shot on another tank, finishing it off. And Sue's doing a great job holding this off. Fantastic. I would have died to this about three minutes ago. But Sue knows. Back off, back off. Don't engage directly. Kuros the Bile, what is stationary? Try to get Kuros the Bile hits on stuff that is moving. At least force the Terran player to move back for just a second. And then when your Swarm Hosts are ready to pop, pop and launch them and bring everybody with them. That's the thing. I mean, there is a good reason to go Swarm Host versus Mech. Mech is not very mobile. If you... What is... Geez, these Thors are just kind of getting free reign on this fifth base. Or fourth base, rather. They can dodge Corrosive Vials really easily thanks to the Medivacs here. Here comes the Locust Swarm. Jumping on top. Corrosive Vials getting some serious hits there, too. But this army is still alive. 11 kills, 15 kills. Thor, good unit. And that base is going to fall. This is really going poorly for Sue. In the early stages of this game, he's going to lose his fourth base. His fifth base is done, but for how much longer can it live? And TY has successfully pushed the advantage onto this side of the map. Sue doesn't want to be over here. He's got Swarm Host. He wants to be on the offensive, but TY has said, nope. I'm going to march across the entire map. Kill one of your bases at the very least maybe try to kill another one and if you want to do Swarmos on the other side that's fine but you really need them here don't you this is a big Swarmos ball though and this actually might just be enough to chase this mech away at least what is left here it is okay so TUI is forced to retreat Corsal Bile is going after that Viking can't quite get it this Thor making sure there's not a base down this way and the Nidus Worm, I don't, I mean, there's some Swarm Hosts in there, but it didn't really launch anything at all. Meanwhile, Liberator shows up at the fifth base, causing problems. 40 drones have been killed in this game. 40. Nine SCVs have been killed. All of them down here at the fourth base of TY, I think. Another Nidus Worm erupts, and almost all the Swarm Hosts get out, except for one. Hey man, every Swarm Host you kill as a Terran player is going to be a good thing. It makes the Swarm Host ball smaller. It makes the Locust Swarm next time smaller. And here they come. They're real slow in the sky. Is he actually going to try to bait him into this? Man, they're really far away from being near anything they can land on. And that's the problem here, is eventually they just time out. So that Cyclone's down, but is anything else going to die? I think most of them are going to time out more than anything else. And they do. Amazing stuff. Couple Hellbats just wandering into the fifth base of Sue, chasing away these drones and then barbecuing them up. Like tasty little drone morsels. TY is playing this so well, but I'm just not a fan. I am so not a fan of this Soros play against Mech, against Terran. Hyperfight Rotors is on the way again. I, TY must have canceled that and then decided to go for it eventually. I don't know what he was, what changed his mind here, but Liberator's cruising around. He knows there are no Corruptors out, and in fact, the Mutas are all dead. 
So Liberators can have a great time just kind of showing up in random spots and murdering things. It's a good strategy here from TY. He recognizes the composition. Sue is finally going for some spellcasters at 15 minutes with the, a couple infestors in production here. And that is a lot of Zerg. TY went for a fifth base, maybe overextended, lost that planetary and a ton of SCVs. The Liberators are still having a great time on the other side of the map, though. Just kind of denying entire bases by themselves here. It is 62 to 50 workers in favor of TY. The Liberators, again, are generally unopposed. I know the Ravagers are a problem. As that Liberator pilot recognizes. Oh, the Swarm Host Massacre, though. Oh, no. Oh, no. That's 17 Swarm Hosts down. Wow. 18,000 resources lost for Sue. 15,000 lost for TY. Sue is doubling down on this Swarm Host strategy. He's making 12 more to replace some of the ones that have died thus far. TY's got another fifth base down here at the south. Roach are just kind of wandering into TY's fifth, though. And um, they were doing all right. 24 SCVs have been killed recently in recent attacks. So that's 34 SCVs down to 54 drones. This game is a bloodbath if you're a worker in the Caprulu sector, man. Probably don't want to be there. If I had to guess where you'd want to live, it would not be here. But Double Banshee coming in. Which, honestly, not bad. Do those Infestors, what are you even doing out here alone? Infestors are support units. They're not solo... Solo soldiers. Sue trying to expand to the 6 o'clock. Nope. Another Nidus from coming up up north. More Infestors in production. Both players have taken serious hits to their economy. Those Zerglings are fighting SCVs. And the SCVs win. It's only 1-1 one, one on those Zerglings. Here at the 16-minute mark. It's really just been... Oh, the Fast Banshees, though. Look at the fast banshees, though. Whee! Oh, the overseers don't even have speed. Meanwhile, TY comes in, wipes out the fourth base. Or whatever that is, the fifth base, I guess. It's gone. Four more drones die. I mean, Sue's taking some serious hits, but he's kind of giving as good as he gets here, too. He's got a locust swarm up north. Going after SCVs, killing supply depots, trying to supply block TY, not going very well on that front. And then Corruptors taking out Liberators. I mean, this game is absolute non-stop stupid levels of action right now. Sue is a four-basing Zerg at 17 minutes. This is not where you want to be. You definitely want more than this. Hatch down, fourth base down, and Sue is a three-basing Zerg versus a effectively... Well, I mean, not um, not worker-wise here for TY, but man, one, two, three, four, five basing Terran with basically a race car mech army here. He's trying to make more Thors. More Banshees are coming out. TY is really investing into these Banshees, ladies and gentlemen. He's got six of them. He's making three more at a time. This is going to be one heck of a Banshee hit squad. You know what's really good at killing Nidus Worms? Banshee hit squads. They're fast when they have Hyperflight. They hit pretty hard. They can kill a Nidus Worm in seconds. Kind of this thing you want. You want speed. You want DPS. And the ability to fly is really nice, too. Marines have to go the long way around. Uh-uh. Not these guys. Did he just... Wow. Look at him. Just supernatural sixth sense awareness. Or maybe that was an accident? Maybe... <laughs> that Liberator was actually trying to go somewhere else and accidentally scouted this. Which is hilarious. Look, the Locust come down. The Banshees handle them, and then the Nidus Worm dies. Another Nidus Worm erupts down to the south. Sue's like, this is a really big map. I can just keep erupting Nidus Worms wherever I darn well please, if they're on opposite sides of the map. And your reaction time cannot be fast enough to stop this from happening. Eventually, these Locusts are going to be cost efficient. They're going to kill s enough stuff to where they're worth it. And normally you would say, well, they don't really have to kill much to be cost efficient. And it's true, but Swarm Hosts are expensive. And Sue has lost a bunch of them and replaced a bunch of them in this game. So we're 19 minutes in. This game is absolutely bonkers. TY is in late game Terran mode of just expanding everywhere on planet Earth. Another Nidus Worm coming up to the north here. It's not all the way to the north here. And the Corruptors are here, so the Banshees can't just kill this. The cover is nice. Although the Corruptors then just kind of left their position to kill a Liberator. Swarm Hosts come out. Banshees come cruising in. And they want to get these Swarm Hosts, man. 
They get one of them. Again, every swarm host you kill is really good to get as a Terran player. The production of Tapper Sue is empty right now, which I'm not a huge fan of. But my gosh, the chaos every time one of those locust swarms lands. Hey, look who's making Banelings for the first time. Sue is... I mean, this is fine, I guess. <laughs> uh, the Corrosive Bile on that Liberator, before it even had fully set up, the Corrosive Biles were incoming there. That's some great timing by Sue. DY, again, he's got the bases. He's got the income. Sue's kind of replanted his fourth and his fifth. But being a five basing Zerg at 20 minutes does not bode well for him in the long run. Another Nidus Worm up north coming. How many of those have been killed today, Falcon? Well, it's 10. With an 11th one going to die here at the same time. Hit Squad, Banshee Crew is here. And when the Corruptors show up, you just run. I mean, you got to run better than this. Bad angles. Okay. Well, just lost a couple of Banshees there for no reason. But one or two Corruptors die too. And an Overseer. So, I don't know. That might be a good trade. Zerglings trying to handle this, but uh, mm, not enough lings there. I'm like a massling play versus this Cyclone tank. Thor thing might be kind of awesome. We are going anti-armor missile with Ravens for the first time in a while. The fourth base is going to die again. All the drones are evacuating. Not, not just from coming up the bottom left-hand corner. TY has been on a base killing binge today. That's his fourth hatchery guild. And... He's going to try to take down the fifth with these Banshees while he's at it. These Banshees doing serious work today. I kind of like it. We don't see enough Banshee work in Terran play these days. That Nidus is still up on the north. The southern one is still up here. The Swarm Hosts are going to launch. TY, again, it is hard to keep up with Swarm Hosts launching all over the place. North and south and midfield. And I mean, in fairness, it's kind of how a Terran player can do with drops. Just be everywhere all at the same time as Zerg has to deal with that. So, I mean, I don't feel too bad for the Terran player here. Oh, the Banshees are faster than Corruptors, but not by a whole lot. It's, if they slow down at all, if they change directions and slow down at all, they take hits from those Corruptors and it's bad. TY is going battle cruisers at the 22 minute mark though. It's time for the BCs. BCs. All right, man. Swarm host ball is not mighty. It's 11. But maybe that's a better number. Maybe that's better than the number, number than 17. Oh, that lock on range is so good. Another corruptor goes down. Army supplies 141 and 126 in favor of TY. Locust coming into a completely, okay, mostly undefended planetary, but it's also mostly mined out. So you're not saving it, but I think it's fine. There's like a thousand gas remaining on that base. Oh, never mind. There's a ton of minerals here. Never you mind that. Six o'clock base dies again for Sue. It got canceled once. It's going to die again here for the second time today, or maybe 1.5 times if we count a cancel as half a kill. My gosh, the drone kills today, though. So many drone kills. 88. 88 drones have been killed. There are 20-minute games of StarCraft where the pro or Zerg player doesn't make 88 workers. That's how many drones have gone down today. Look how fast these locusts die to these Thors. Thor's a good unit. <laughs> that single target attack, man. It hits hard against those locusts. They are very, very not tanky. Crystal Bile's landing on tanks. Not the best solid hits of all time. 15 kill Thor. 16 kill Thor. 7 kill Thor. 9 kill Thor. These guys are doing great for their peoples. And I think TY has this game pretty well in hand. Sue has really been able, unable to get out of this like 4 or 5 base rut, man. Meanwhile, look how many bases there are for TY. He is just killing it. With 52 workers, there's 25 drones. For, this is it, man. He can't afford to lose 20 more. 20 more workers go down. The Blue Flame Hellion attack, and that's your good game. T.Y. With the mech taking down Sue, and I feel vindicated. <laughs> I feel so vindicated right now. Man, Swarmhost versus Mech. 
Not a good idea, Zerg players. If Sue can't make it work, if Rogue can't make it work, I'm not entirely sure how you can make it work. But maybe if they don't have enough Blue Flame Hellions or Hellbats, maybe it could. But professional Terran players do not make that mistake. Man, hit that like button if you enjoyed this game, by the way. That was a ton of fun. And hey, look, we're getting Terran wins and Zerg losses on the channel. Eh? Eh? This is, I'm, I feel like there's a shift coming, you guys. I really feel like this mech thing is happening. And I don't know why. I think what it really comes down to is some Zerg players are entirely resistant to using Vipers in this matchup. We've watched Raynor and we've watched Serral take down incredibly elite Terran players who do this with Vipers who use Abduct and Blinding Cloud liberally. Tossing down abducts on big ticket items like Thors and tanks, pulling them into lurker balls and instantly killing them. Just over and over and over and over again. It's so hard to get up a huge Thor ball like the one that TY had here if you just keep killing them over and over. How many Thors died in this game? Five, right? If you're going for abduct, it's going to be 10, 15, 20 Thors down. The Banshees were a brilliant choice here from TY. I'm not going to say no to that. That was so good. T.Y. just played this perfectly. He really did. He lost bases. He lost two planetaries. He lost 53 SCVs. But his constant harassment on the other side of the map, killing 115 drones, 18 swarm hosts, and six hatcheries. Just incredible. And all the resources poured into Nidus Worms there, too, from Sue that didn't really pay off. The one big swarm host locust attack that we saw was at the end of the game. It was on Planetary Fortress. It was a really good hit. But every other one, T.Y. was ready for. He was prepared for. He didn't lose that much. And it worked out for him. So I just, I don't know. I'm not sure if it's a Korean thing or what. I just haven't seen a Korean Zerg player make the choice to go for Vipers against Mech. And I don't know if it's just stubbornness or what, but it's very strange. It's very, very strange. We've seen, again, Serral and Rainer make it look easy to defeat this strategy with Vipers and Abduct and Blinding Cloud. But no, no, Sue and Rogue not interested. And they both lost. So, we'll see. Again, it's the meta is in flux right now. I would say, why are we seeing so much mech? The only major change we've seen to this matchup has been, recently, recently, has been the removal of the Infested Terran. I don't think Infested Terrans are a big deal in this matchup. The Battlecruisers, did he ever... I, he was making one. Oh, he's got four of them. Where the heck are they? And Did they accomplish anything today? Hold on. Battle cruisers, where are you? And are you accomplishing things? No kills. No kills, no kills. Okay, so the battle cruisers were late arrivals. They never accomplished anything in this game. But uh, yeah, they're not the reason he won. It's not like there were infested Terrans just like keeping the battle cruisers at bay before, and the battle cruisers now can succeed. They did weren't part of this battle. They weren't part of this war at all. So I can't figure it out. That's other than we know that the Korean Zerg players stubbornly refuse to make vipers. Might be it. Anyway, let me know what you think in the comments. That was a great game, but that's going to be it for me today. So this has been Falcon Paladin coming at you with yet another edition of StarCraft II Legacy of the Void. Go ahead, hit that like button. Hit that subscribe if you like what you saw and what you heard today. You can also catch me on Twitter, Facebook, Patreon, and Twitch. All at slash Falcon Paladin. And until next time, as always, thank you so much for watching, and you take care of yourself.